Hello Ghana, this is Fruits of the Womb, your authentic source of maternal and child health information. My name is Dr. Vera Biu. The WHO estimates that 5.2% of the world's population and 7% of pregnant women carry an abnormal hemoglobin gene with over 300,000 born annually with the disease. In Ghana, it's said that one in three Ghanaians carry an abnormal gene. That's either an S, a C, or both. Today on Fruits of the Womb, we look at sickle cell disease, both in pregnancy and in children. It promises to be an exciting one. You don't want to go anywhere. We'll go on a quick break. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest. Your presence has changed my life. Your tenderness makes me want to take care of you forever. And that promise that I will give you nothing but the best always. Cousin's Baby with Natural Ingredients also gives the best care for baby's soft skin and hair. Cousin's Baby. Growing together naturally. From your first shopping list to the very first sound you made to your first bar, your first date, you've brought me so much joy and I promise to always protect you. Camel Baby Antiseptic with a mild formula protects your baby's delicate skin from germs and bacteria. So welcome back. This is Fruits of the Womb brought to you by Kind Ketsi of Cousins Baby and Camel Baby Antiseptic. Let's stay interactive. Join us on our Facebook page. Go to Facebook, type Fruits of the Womb and you can post your questions, comments and contributions. We are also streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube. Today we are discussing sickle cell disease, a very common condition in our environment. And to help us delve into this very important topic are two wonderful people in studio. On my extreme right, Dr. Hilda Mantebia Boy. She is a resident in pediatrics at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, as well as the secretary of the Greater Accra Division of the Pediatric Society of Ghana. You're welcome, Hilda. Thank you, Vera. And on my immediate right is Dr. Samuel Opong. He is a consultant obstetrician gynecologist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, and he has a special interest in sickle cell disease as well. You're very nice. welcome, Dr. Opong. Thank you. So, Hilda, what is sickle cell disease? in the first place and how does one acquire the disease? Essentially, it's an abnormality in the hemoglobin in the red blood cell. Normally, the red blood cell will last for about 120 days, but in sickle cell disease, it will last for about 20 days before dying. The name of the disease is because of the shape of the red blood cell. It's sickle shaped like, let's say a banana. So that's how the shape of the sickle cell is. If you are looking at it under the microscope, that is what you will see. And then the normal red blood cell is roundish. Let me just put it that way. So you have an orange, which is normal, and the banana shape, which is for the sickle cell. And how you can acquire it typically is that you acquire it from your parents. Everybody is either AA, AS, SS, or SC. Okay. So the normal one is AA. And the... Abnormal one is the, the S, S C. Or C. Yes, so the S or the C. So one father will give you maybe an A or an S, and then the mother will give you an A or an S, depending on what they have. So okay. if the child has an S from a parent who has S, S, or A, S, or... Uh, yeah, so if the child gets an S from there and gets one from the mother, which is either an S or a C, then you have the sickle cell disease, which is SS or SC, okay. and then the S beta thalassemia, which you don't want to hear. No. So, <laughs> okay. And do you, how, how prevalent is this condition in our so environment? About Amongst two, children? Yes, yeah, so about two out of 100 children may have sickle cell disease. Okay. Dr. Opong, what, what are the 
what's the prevalence like in pregnant women? Among pregnant women, it's not as high as we find among children. Okay. The reason being that out of the uh, from the two out of every hundred newborn babies that may be born with the sickle cell disease, a good number of them in our environment will die before they reach adulthood. Mm -hmm. And therefore, by the time they get pregnant, the number of survivors from sickle cell disease during infancy has reduced significantly. And secondly, a good number of them may be so ill that they may not be, be able to even achieve pregnancy or even there uh, try pregnancy. So in Kolibu Teaching Hospital, where I work, because our SSA referral center and they refer all these pregnancy-related difficulties and complicated cases to us, we tend to see a lot more than you will find in, say, a district hospital or a maternity home. Mm -hmm. So in terms of figures from Kolibu Teaching Hospital, about 1.5 to 2% of all our pregnant women have sickle, sickle cell, cell disease. disease. But I must be quick to say that it is not representative of the country as a whole. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the signs and, and symptoms in children? And how different are they from pregnant women? Around maybe about six months or getting to about a year, the child may develop swelling of the hands and the feet, which we call dactylitis. It will be swollen and then painful. You may notice also that the child has yellow eyes or at certain points, the child may have cola-like urine or urine which is dark in color with, together with the yellowing of the eyes. They may have pain bone pain from time to time, seasonal bone pain. When the weather is cold, they may complain of pains, pains everywhere, pains in the bones. They may also have, well, the extreme is getting a stroke. Mm. We, we expect adults to get strokes mm. because they are old. They may have hypertension, but children, can with, also get yes, children with sickle cell disease also can get stroke. Another thing is that they are more prone to getting infections. So typically you may hear that or get sick often, every two weeks mm. sick, every one month sick, it's not going well or it's not thriving, even though maybe the child is eating, 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 maybe the child is not going well because of all these factors. So these are some of the signs or symptoms of sickle cell disease. And I think earlier you also mentioned that the red blood cell doesn't last as long as a normal yes. red cell. So that means that they are prone to low... Yes, yeah, so the sickle cell, mm. the sickle cell, cell will not last as long as the normal red blood cell. cell. So they are all red blood cells, but mm. the sickled one or the banana-shaped one mm. will not last as long as the orange-shaped one. So it will break quickly, then mm. the blood level may go low, mm. the child may have uh, signs of anemia, maybe mm. easy, uh, 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 gets tired quickly, yes, gets tired very often. The, if you look under the eyes, they may look white. white. Some yes. mothers are able to tell. Oh, some they are able to tell. tell you that my child looks uh, pale. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Paul, I shocked you. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Paul, so what's the situation like for pregnant women? Well, what are some of their signs? Yeah. And what are the, some problems that are peculiar to them when they are pregnant? Yeah. Now, the problem of sickle cell disease during pregnancy predates their pregnancy era. Like Dr. Boy indicated, a lot of them from childhood with the disease have developed several end organ damage or end organ diseases. So the problems they have during pregnancy is usually an exaggeration or worsening of the pre-pregnancy problems that they did have. For instance, the anemia that she talked about, most sickle cell disease adults have anemia, baseline anemia, particularly those that have the SS type, the ones we classically call sickle cell anemia. So these women start pregnancy already with a very low blood level. And with the onset of the pregnancy, this low blood level or anemia tends to get worse. Mm. So they may come in labor or in advanced stages of pregnancy if they are not known and managed properly with ridiculously low levels of Hemoglobin. hemoglobin. So that's one of them. Again, they are prone to infection, so they get recurrent malaria, they get urinary tract infection, they get chest infections, which often becomes exaggerated, becomes worse mm -hmm. than somebody who does not have sickle cell, sickle cell disease. disease. Again, they develop hypertension during pregnancy more than those who do not have sickle cell disease. 
-hmm. and one severe complication of, of hypertension during pregnancy called eclampsia, where they mm -hmm. have a fit or a seizure, also get, tends to be more common during pregnancy. Again, quite apart from these conditions that are related to pregnancy, the complications or problems of the sickle cell disease itself get worse, particularly the bone pain. So when women with sickle cell disease get pregnant, they tend to get more frequent bone pain crisis than, than when, when they were, not, they were pregnant. not pregnant. And one other severe form of pain crisis, what we call the acute chest syndrome, which has got to do with acute lung problems, which sometimes can lead them to lung failure, also tends to be more common and even more difficult to manage when they get pregnant. So these are some of the problems that relate to the mothers themselves. Mm -hmm. Then quite apart from the problem of the mothers, you know, in pregnancy, we're dealing with two individuals, yes. the mother and, and the, baby. the baby in the womb. So there are problems that affect the baby right in the womb, mm -hmm. whether the baby has sickle cell disease or not, because of the mother's sickle cell disease status. Mm -hmm. And they start quite early. At early, preg early stages of pregnancy, their fetuses or babies are at more risk of miscarriage. So they tend to miscarry. Mm -hmm. The babies in the womb do not grow well. So they may be pretty small compared to their counterparts who do not have sickle cell disease. Or sometimes the baby may suddenly die in the womb. Mm -hmm. Often because of the complications that the mother is developed, they tend to be delivered pre prematurely, okay. either as a, a, an intervention to help salvage the mother or as a spontaneous preterm labor. Okay. So these are all some of the problems that they do develop. Well, we'll go on a quick break and we'll be right back. Your presence has changed my life. Your tenderness makes me want to take care of you forever. And that promise that I will give you nothing but the best always. Cousin's Baby with Natural Ingredients also gives the best care for baby's soft skin and hair. Cousin's Baby. Growing together naturally. From your first shopping list to the very first sound you made to your first bar, your first date, you've brought me so much joy and I promise to always protect you. Camel Baby Antiseptic with a mild formula protects your baby's delicate skin from germs and bacteria. Welcome back. This is Fruits of the Womb brought to you by Kain Ketsi of Cousins Baby and Camel Baby Antiseptic. Join us on our Facebook page. Go to Facebook, type Fruits of the Womb and you can post your questions, comments or contributions on our page. We're also streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. Today on Fruits of the Womb, we are discussing sickle cell disease, both in the pregnant woman and in children. So Hilda, briefly management in children, and Dr. Pong, you tackle management and prevention of complications, if possible, sure. in pregnant women. That's right. Okay, so for children, early diagnosis is important for us because that helps us to get a lot of time to, to, to manage the child, to prevent the complications that we've spoken about. So how early can the diagnosis be made? So the diagnosis can be made as early as in the newborn. Currently, okay. we are doing the uh, newborn screening for sickle cell disease in Kolebu Teaching Hospital, okay. but it's just on pilot basis. It's been done in the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital for a number of years now, but it's not been widely spread, so it's not available throughout the country. However, by as early as about six months, mm -hmm. you can do the HB electrophoresis, which actually tells you what the child has, as okay. in whether it's AS, a -A -S, -S, -A -S, 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 S, or SC. Okay. So, yes, that's what we, 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 we do. And the earliest or the, the most likely you will get is the six months, even though the newborn is available, is available, but, but it's on, pilot, on basis. pilot basis. You were talking about the management. Yeah, so for the management, essentially, we'll start them on the micronutrients, which is the folic acid, the zincovit, and then vitamin C, 
to help them to grow and also with so the blood multi production. So multivitamins, but those specific ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, those specific ones are what we give. And then we also advise them on the dietary or what they have to eat because they have to eat healthily. Everybody has to eat healthily, but mm -hmm. especially them because of the problems with the growth that they are at risk of. Another thing is the medications that we put them on antibiotics. We give them penicillin V to help protect them from infections mm -hmm. from the streptococcus. I don't want to go deep. Don't but, go deep <laughs> but you mentioned earlier that yes, they are prone to infections. Infection. So we'll put them on the penicillin V and then encourage them to drink a lot of water to okay. prevent them from being dehydrated because when they are dehydrated, mm -hmm. that will put them at a higher risk of getting the crisis. Dr. Pong, what's, what do you do for the pregnant women? Well, for us, as Dr. Sulu Because after, you painted a very scary picture. <laughs> that is very true. In fact, the picture is probably more scary than <laughs> I described. Mm. Uh, for us, during pregnancy, we view pregnant women with sickle cell disease as high-risk patients. And indeed they are, because the statistics is not in their favor at all. Now, we encourage early registration at the antenatal clinic. As early as on the day the person realizes she's pregnant. Or, is, okay. or even if she's in doubt as to whether she's pregnant or not, she should come. Okay. We will answer that simple question for her, whether or not she's pregnant. And we encourage them to start the antenatal clinic very early. We shouldn't wait and say that, Pregnant women must start antenatal clinic after four or five months. No, it is not said anywhere. It's not documented anywhere. So as early as they realize they are pregnant, they should come to the hospital. Then when they come, we take them through assessment by history, by a physical examination, by a laboratory examination to also find out what end organ problems or complications they may have had with their sickle cell disease already so that our management will start from there. So for when you say end organ, can you just briefly tell us what? Okay, so mean? some of the common problems that sickle cell disease patients may have is problems with their kidneys. Okay. So they may start the, uh, the pregnancy with some level of abnormality of their kidney function. Mm. They may start the antenatal clinic with some problem with even with their eyes. Because sickle cell disease is one of the conditions that affect the eyes as well. Okay. They may start with some lung problems. They may start even with heart problems. So all these things, we screen them to be sure that they are normal. So we can assess them and determine how well they will be able to go through the pregnancy. And it's therefore important that they come early so we can do this assessment. Now, having done that, then of course we concentrate on the pregnancy as well. It's important to date the pregnancy early, so we'll be able to use the information we get to manage them very well. Then they need counseling about their condition, about what to expect during pregnancy. Because I indicated that they tend to have a lot of problems during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, for instance, their antenatal schedule will be different from those who do not have sickle okay. cell disease. Okay. For instance, in Kolebu Teaching Hospital now, at the beginning, we may see them between three to two to every three weeks, till they are around 26, 28 weeks. Then from that time onwards, we encourage them to come as frequently as every week or every two weeks. Okay. In fact, they shouldn't feel shy to come anytime, anytime. they have problem. And we try to open up to them so they can even liaise with their caregivers, their midwives, their doctors looking after them. We try to establish good relationship with them. So they are encouraged to come back to us anytime they have any problem. Then in comes their supplementation of their folic acid and sometimes iron supplementation as well. Particularly when we realize that they need the iron. I know in the literature elsewhere, people have suggested that they should not be given iron. It may not be true in our part of the world, particularly when our diet three sources of iron is not that common mm. and our patients don't get transfused that often like it happens elsewhere. elsewhere. Because we have actually documented several cases of women with sickle cell disease who are pregnant and actually have iron deficiency and okay. therefore require this iron supplementation. Mm. Then also we educate them on signs of complications. For instance, swelling of their feet, headaches, signs that may... Things that may suggest that their blood pressure may be going up. Okay. Okay. Pain. Pain management is one thing that we take quite we take seriously during pregnancy. And we also realize that their pain, their frequency of developing pain tend to be higher, particularly as they get into the last three months of the pregnancy. And that is when, if care is not taken to manage them properly, they may have severe complications that may 
that they may even end up losing the babies that they've struggled so much That's for. Good. And we encourage them to take their medication regularly as well. Rest whenever possible. And then also taking a lot of water in that part of the world because mm -hmm. our weather is quite hot, they tend mm -hmm. to get dehydrated. So they may need a lot of um, rest, they need a lot of uh, and I think water in sickle cell disease, water is therapeutic. Yes. Certainly it is yeah. therapeutic in our part of the world. Yeah, yeah because our weather is hot, mm -hmm. we tend to sweat a lot so they become dehydrated. dehydrated. It may not be so relevant elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So viewers, like you know, every week we have the question of the week on what has been discussed in studio. So for today, the question is... Send your answer to the number on the screen. Let's check out last week's winner. Congratulations. How sensitive is the sickling test in identifying people who have sickle cell disease? Because for a lot of our pregnant women who go to the antenatal clinic, the test that is done is the sickling and not necessarily the HB electrophoresis. Is there a problem with that? So the sickling test will only tell you that the person has an S but I will not necessarily tell you that the person has SS or AS or A, you know, so you need the HB electrophoresis to tell you that this is what you have, SS or AS. So meaning that you have the disease or you are a carrier of okay. the S. So you do need the HB electrophoresis to make the diagnosis. And not just the sickling. No, and not just the Dr. sickling. Dr. Pong, do you want to say anything? Uh, I must say that, remember we said the... Gene frequency is about 20-30% okay. in our population. But the disease itself is much lower than that. Okay. And therefore, the sickling test is quite good. It's the first line okay. that will be used to screen over 65-70% of them who may be negative. Mm -hmm. Then those who test sickling positive, positive must now move on to do the HB electrophoresis as Dr. Boy indicated. So that we'll be able to tell that out of that number or that percentage, how many of them have SS or SC. And the SS and the SCs are the ones that we consider or the ones that we are talking about well, as having sickle cell disease. And the ones that we are worried about. Not those who turn out to be um, AS. Okay. For many of us, I think that the earliest time that we ever do a sickling test is before marriage because mm. it's a requirement by the church and some but don't even do some it don't even and do some it. don't even yeah. do it and actually i think that this has happened to even health workers so baseline i think that everybody should know what their sickling status is and not just by the sickling test but by the hb electrophoresis so that you know whether you are ac or as because if you have the c you can still have a child who has sc which is sickle cell disease Jesus. also. Right. So you have to know your sickling status way before you fall in love and then it becomes <laughs> difficult to break the bond. <laughs> because if you realize yes. only during the premarital well, counseling, counseling, many people will still go ahead in faith Tomorrow. and with hope that they will not have a child with sickle cell disease. But once you have the AS, for instance, and your partner has the AS or maybe even AC, there's a 25% chance that you will have a child with sickle cell disease with each pregnancy, pregnancy. not with mm -hmm. one so that maybe when you have your first one you, you say that oh okay. the sickle has come oh, sorry so sorry all. the sickle cell so disease child has, has come. come so the others they yeah. no sickle cell disease no it's not <laughs> like that so with each pregnancy there is a risk that you might have a child with sickle, sickle cell, cell disease, disease if you are the carrier so please get tested way before you fall in love and also i think health workers can do opportunistic screening when the child comes who is ill you should Take do the, the hb yes hb, HB. electrophoresis and don't hide the result in the folder tell the relatives or the caregivers of the child that this child has as so no note it as the child is growing let the child know that this Unlike is what him yes or her. 
not to fall in love with someone who also is AS or AC. So your final words, Dr. Fong. Already. Well, this is get, it's getting interesting. Yes. But I think we need to take this advice very seriously yeah. because they have far-reaching implications than we think. Mm. On my final words, I will advise that women who know they have sickle cell disease should not wait till they get pregnant before they begin to find out what can be done for them. To be able to optimize the outcome of their pregnancy, they need to have pre-pregnancy care. Pre-pregnancy means that I've decided in the next six months, in the next one year, I want to get pregnant. Because I know I have sickle cell disease, and the sickle cell disease will impact on the outcome of my, outcome of my pregnancy. I want to go see a doctor. I want to go see a gynecologist for her, him or her to evaluate me and see, do I have any problems that may impact That's on my pregnancy? So that the person will take, the doctor will take that individual through all the necessary tests mm. and provide the necessary solutions that can be provided mm -hmm. so as to minimize the impact of sickle cell disease during pregnancy. I must say that is something we are not doing very well in our part of the country. It's on both sides. The fault is partly to be blamed on the healthcare providers because we don't provide the opportunity, but mm. people are being encouraged to come forward. Mm. And then also, a lot of us Ghanaians don't plan pregnancy. Yes. <laughs> we are there, and the pregnancy comes, and we accept it. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, particularly for women with sickle cell <laughs> disease, we must take our time to plan, plan. our pregnancy. So we will have the necessary pre-pregnancy care before we embark on that nine months journey. Thank you so much, Dr. Fong. Hilda, your final words to our viewers. Okay, so sickle cell disease has problems. I mean, people with sickle cell disease have problems, yes. But it is not a death sentence. There are lots of successful people, yes. people who have grown and had a full life, who have lived with sickle cell disease and have been well. There's help available. The di early diagnosis, early treatment and follow-up helps to improve the survival or the outcome for individuals living with sickle cell disease. So thank you so much, Dr. Hilda Mantibia Boy and Dr. Samuel Opong. So viewers, all too soon, this is the final episode of season two of Fruits of the Womb. I know it's been great, it's been exciting, but season three promises to be even bigger and better. However, we can only do it with your support. We appeal to all corporate bodies, businesses, individuals who wish to support this worthy cause. This is a program that puts maternal and child health issues first. It's a one of a kind and we appeal to you to sponsor, to sponsor this program. Just call any of the lines that are scrolling on your screen right now. So my name is Dr. Vera Bayou, and I hope to see you in season three, where there'll be so many exciting topics. And always remember that God loves you. Stay blessed. <laughs>